Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're going to be following the order of service as you have it in the bulletin tonight. This will tell you where we are in the service. It'll also tell you where to turn in the hymnal for the hymns. So we'll begin tonight with the opening hymn, From Heaven Above to Earth I Come. Dear friends in Christ, we have come together in the presence of God, our Heavenly Father, to give Him thanks and praise for the gift of His Son, our meek and righteous King, who by His death became our Savior from sin and eternal death. By His Holy Spirit, may He enlighten, govern, and direct us, that we may ever remain faithful to this righteous King and Savior and not be offended by his humble form and despised word, but, firmly believing in him, obtain eternal salvation and the fullness of joy in heaven. To this end, may God the Father grant you his grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Daughter of Zion, surely your salvation is coming. Rejoice, daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard, and you shall have gladness of heart. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock. Stir up your strength and come and save us. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be,
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, as you once caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light, grant, we pray you, that we who have known the mysteries of that light here on earth may come to the fullness of its joys in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one true God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verses 10 through 14. The Lord spoke to Ahaz. Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be as deep as Sheol or as high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. And he said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary men that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Here ends the Old Testament reading. The epistle reading is from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness, and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. He rends the epistle.
Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel for Christmas Eve is from the second chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, verses 1 through 14. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. Here ends the reading of the Holy Gospel. We now confess the Christian faith according to the Apostles' Creed.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> the sermon text for us tonight is from our Old Testament reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. And we pray. These are your words, Heavenly Father. Sanctify us by the truth. Your word is true. Amen. We are here tonight because God has given us a sign. This sign is that in the incarnation and birth of his son, God has intervened into the human condition of sin and death. God has done this for us in two ways, by causing a virgin to conceive and bear a son, and by making it so that this son bears the name Emmanuel. We know from our own life experiences and from the whole of human history that virgins don't conceive. In fact, virgins and conceive are practically antonyms. You can't be a virgin if you have conceived, at least not according to the normal way of things. But Jesus was not conceived according to the normal way of things. First of all, unlike us, Jesus existed before he was conceived and born. Jesus is not just a man. He is also God. According to his eternal divine nature, he has existed with God the Father and the Holy Spirit from eternity. And then, when Jesus was conceived and became a man too, this was not because his mother Mary had come into contact with a man. Jesus was conceived because his mother had come into contact with the power of God. As we read in Luke chapter 1, before the events of tonight's gospel happened, Mary was just another Hebrew girl living in the village of Nazareth. Mary was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph. By all accounts, Mary was just living life, minding her own business. But then, one day, six months after the angel Gabriel had appeared to Zechariah, he appeared to Mary too and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. Now, of course, Mary had not been expecting that to happen. And we're told that this greeting from the angel scared her. Of course it did. But the end, the angel told Mary to not be afraid because she had found favor with God. She would conceive and bear a son to whom she would give the name Jesus. This son would be great and would be called the son of the Most High, and he would rule over God's people forever. Now, when Mary heard this, she didn't doubt what the angel told her, but she did have a question. How will this be since I am a virgin? The angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. We just heard in that last sentence the reason why God gave the sign of a virgin bearing and conceiving a son. It wasn't just so that God could show us that he could do this. It wasn't just the way for God to show his power. It was so that this child promised Savior of the world could be called holy. Now, unlike was the case with Jesus, when we were conceived and born, we were not called holy. We just heard how Jesus was conceived. It was from God. And because of that, the fact that he was conceived by the Holy Spirit and the womb of a virgin, Jesus came into the world holy before God. But what about us? What was our spiritual condition from when we were conceived? Psalm 51 tells us, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Jesus is just like us in that he was conceived and born as a man. But Jesus is not at all like us in that he did not come into the world bearing the guilt and marks of sin. In God's sight, because of how he had been conceived Miraculously, Jesus was perfect. And then, for his entire life, Jesus remained perfect. He never committed even one sin, because that was how Jesus had to be. Again, God was not showing off 
by sending his son into the world as the one God-man. God sent his son to us as one of us so that he could save us by having no sins of his own and then taking our sins onto himself as he paid for them on the cross. If Jesus had only been a sinless person, then his life and death would have nothing to do with us. This is because if Jesus had only been a man but not also God, then the perfect nature of his life and his sacrificial death, well, they would have opened up the gates of heaven, but only for Jesus. And then they would have slammed shut right behind him. This is where the significance of the name Emmanuel comes in. In tonight's Old Testament reading, the prophet Isaiah did not tell us what Emmanuel means. But in the Gospel of Matthew, we are told what Emmanuel means. We read there in the first chapter when an angel also appeared to Joseph to tell him that he should not be worried about taking Mary as his wife even though she was pregnant with a child that wasn't his. Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. The birth that has brought us here tonight was not just the birth of a baby boy. It was also the birth of God. Because in Christ, the eternally begotten Son of God has come to us. According to his human nature, the Son of God has become one of us. From then on and forevermore, God is with us. Now this is not something that you would have been able to tell about Jesus by just looking at him right after he was born. But this was something that was shown to be true about Jesus 33 years later. On Christmas, Jesus came into our world in the flesh for the first time. And then on Easter, even though it seemed impossible, Jesus came again, alive in the flesh. To be our Savior, Jesus had to suffer and die. He had to do this to bear the punishment and guilt of our sins and the sins of the whole world. If he hadn't done that, then Jesus would have been a great guy, but he wouldn't have been our Savior. Jesus also couldn't just be a man. His life had to count for more than all of our individual lives, and it did. Jesus' life counted for all of us, because when he suffered and died on the cross, he did so as the son of Mary and as the son of of God. Now, if Jesus would have stayed dead, then regardless of everything he had said and all the miracles he had performed, those who believed in Jesus and trusted his promises would have been shown to have been wrong. And Christmas itself would be shown to be a stupid, useless holiday of the same eternal significance as International Pi Day. But Christmas is not insignificant or useless or something that is not worth celebrating. This is because Jesus did not stay dead. On the third day following his death, Jesus rose. In doing so, Jesus showed that for the whole of his life, God really had been with us. He showed that he really was holy. And he showed that through faith in him and what he had done, we could be called holy and called God's children too. Now, four days ago, my daughter Helen turned five. So, of course, my family celebrated her birthday. But when we celebrated Helen's birthday, we were really only celebrating her. We weren't celebrating something about ourselves. But whenever we all celebrate Jesus' birth at Christmas, we are also celebrating something about ourselves. We are the ones for whom Jesus was conceived and born. It was for our sake that Jesus assumed our human condition, and then grew up and lived a perfect sinless life according to the same demands of God's law that apply to us. It was for us that Jesus allowed himself to be crucified and killed. It was for us that he rose from the dead to validate all of God's prophecies and promises. And it is for us and for all sinners like us 
that Jesus is still with us through his word. Even though Jesus has already been born, lived, died, rose, and ascended to the right hand of God the Father, Jesus is still with us and working in us through his word. His word is the enduring sign that God has left for mankind. Even though we don't see Jesus physically walking and speaking among us as he once did, whenever we encounter Jesus through his word, we do see him and hear him through eyes and ears of faith. That, after all, is the reason why we have come together here tonight. It isn't just to see the kids sing for us, even though it was cute. It isn't just because we like being in a candlelit room, singing Silent Night with other people, even though that is a moving experience. We are here tonight, and God willing, we'll come back next year and many times in between because we believe that in Christ, God has intervened to save us. He has caused a virgin to conceive and bear a son so that the child whom she bore and to whom she gave the name Jesus could be our divine and human Savior. Glory to God in highest heaven, who unto us his Son hath given, while angels sing with pious mirth a glad new year for all the earth. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Days of the decree went out from Caesar Augustus that the whole world would be registered. And all were to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was the house and lineage of David to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who is with child. And while they were there, they had cares for her to give birth, and they gave birth to her firstborn son, the wrapped in sorry cloths, laid in a manger. Because there was no room for them in the inn. Mama? And when they saw it, they made known Jesus, and in the same region they made known They recited them the dear voice of the king. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. Angel said to them, Fear not, I bring you good news of great joy. Our Savior, who is Christ the Lord, was born in the city of David, and this will be a sign for all people. You will find the baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly they were with the angels, a multitude of a heavenly host, praising God and saying, Let's go to Bethlehem and see 
of when they saw it, they made known the same concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered in what, in what the shepherds took. Please rise as we sing silently.
Let us give thanks and pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you that of your mercy and compassion, you caused your Son to become incarnate and through him redeemed us from sin and everlasting death. We beseech you, enlighten our hearts by your Holy Spirit that we may ever be thankful for such grace and be comforted by it in all tribulation and temptation and at last obtain eternal salvation. Through the same, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who has also taught us to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Merry Christmas, you may be seated. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas time. Thanks to Carolyn for playing for the service tonight. Thanks to the kids. 
Thanks to Marta and Jen for wrangling Zed Kids. If you're joining us as a visitor tonight, thank you for being with us. Please know that you can sign our guest book before you go, and you're always welcome to join us again. In fact, you're all welcome to join us again just tomorrow because there is so much going on at Christmas, you can't even fit it in one worship service. So we're going to have our Christmas Day service tomorrow at 1030. I hope to see many, if not all of you there. And so until we meet again, may God's peace keep all of you.